Hello, my name is Jennifer Montone. I'm the principal owner of the Philadelphia Orchestra. Thank you for watching this video on face troubles, chop problems, overuse, etc. With me is my fabulous colleague and former student, Eric Huckins. And um, we would like to start with talking about general overuse, which pretty much everybody does at some point. <laughs> so um, if you're just having a little bit of endurance concerns, a little bit of mild overuse, there's just some healthy habits we can get into and some things we can check for while we're performing, while we're practicing, while we're rehearsing. And uh, a lot of times that can kind of clear it up very easily. And then we'll get into some more serious uh, situations as well. Now, you can check your life for these very common, not very helpful habits. Namely, um, when you're practicing, a lot of us do this, we repeat high things and loud things over and over again without much of a purpose or plan, which can toast you pretty quickly. <laughs> um, second thing is taking shallow breaths. This happens especially in rehearsals and concerts and uh, forgetting the support, if you use support or forgetting your subdivision. Now, the third thing that I find uh, very common and not helpful is stopping the air, especially on big leaps, on tongued passages, on jumpy passages. Those are very easy fixes. And once you notice them and once you become aware of them, you can get rid of them incredibly quickly. Um, the last one is overblowing or spreading, uh, especially when you play loud or when you play low. In orchestra and band and brass and other chamber rehearsals, that can happen very easily as well. And then you end up squeezing up high because your face is in kind of a weird spot and it feels strange. So uh, those are things that you can fix very quickly and can help with things. Second thing is if you're having a little bit of face trouble, feel free to take time off, take it easy. Take it easy at rehearsals. Take things down the octave when you practice them. Take time off from the instrument a couple days or however long you need. Your teacher can be a great resource, your former teacher, your colleagues. They can help you with figuring out uh, what is going on with your face and what might help with it. You can always do musical projects. I talk about that a little more in my jaw video. Now, another thing that is very simple is tweaking your practicing. How long do we play what repertoire? How much do we practice etudes and basics? Where do you start feeling tired? And do you need to do it in every key or can you just do it in a few keys one day and a few keys the next day? Things like that. Um, how do I break my etudes down? How do I break my solo pieces down? Do I break them down to a simple and low enough place that uh, that isn't just running it over and over again, but can actually get some real work done. Now, um, you wanna run your practice routine by a teacher or a colleague or a friend. You can record yourself to catch some of those habits that I mentioned. Double checking your warm up is a good place to start. A lot of us have this huge warm up that really you're exhausted by the end and that obviously doesn't help. So there might be basics that you have in your warm up that you can practice in other things. You can practice basics when you're in an orchestra rehearsal, any long tone in an orchestra rehearsal requires the same things that you practice on a long tone at home. You know, good breath, good sound, good time, using your stomach, all those things. So everything that we practice at home, we can pretty much practice in ensembles. And that can cut down on, you know, uh, hurting your face by practicing without really being mindful about it. Now, body wellness is a huge part of any injury. Yoga, breathing exercises, stretching, things like the breathing gym, all of those um, things can really help. Now, Eric is here to play for us a little bit. And uh, first we're gonna start with some warm downs. These are just the ones that I do. Of course, you know, all of these exercises are just mine and uh, you should find your own and make your own. And that's, you know, That'll be the way that'll help you the best, but you can always start with these to give you some ideas. So, can you show us a warm down? <laughs> some flutters that you can do down low that are very helpful for uh, just getting the response back in your lips when they've had a lot of pressure on them. Uh, 
a little goofy sounding, but it actually really uh, gives you the, the feeling of the blood returning to your lips. Now, I do sort of a silly thing. Sometimes I'll feel like I'm pressing into my face a little bit on the left side, so I'll actually move the mouthpiece over and do that flutter over on that side. Then sometimes I'll do it on the other side as well, so it's centered right on where the rim is. It sounds pretty ridiculous in those two ways, but it's helpful again for kind of returning the blood to that area. Now in that same vein of warming down, we can of course uh, put Arnica gel or vitamin E or you know a warm washcloth on our lips the next day, some people ice, all of these things. So there's a lot of things you can do if you just have a you know, heavy day of playing and then you need to be able to play well the next day. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is something that uh, helps with flexibility and that's soft mouthpiece buzzing. A lot of times when um, when we've played a little bit too much or with not always the best habits, we need to get our, our response back. And if we put too much air behind everything when we're playing the next day, then the response sort of is reliant on a lot of air. And then you might have a soft attack in a rehearsal and it'll be uncomfortable. So I start my days with soft mouthpiece buzzing and Eric will show us that. Now, another practice uh, technique that I love, uh, just as a principal horn, as someone who's always played a lot of high things, is to practice things down the octave. It's great for your low register, first off, and second off, especially if you're having too much to play, if you're preparing for a, an audition of any kind, a major piece. Uh, if you play things down the octave, you actually ensure that you use your air very, very well. You have to take big, deep breaths down there you have to sustain your air, all of the healthy things that we need to really play up high, but sometimes we forget, you have to do down low or else the notes just don't speak at all. So it really helps engender the kind of habits that we're gonna need up in the high register. So Eric's gonna play some down the octave for us. slurred. I tend to play a lot of things slurred anyway, again just for the good air habits that it ensures that I do, but um, especially if you're doing things mouthpiece buzzing and down the octave, especially those situations, uh, I would say start with them slurred. Then you can always do tongued. You can even try to do it exactly in the same style as you're going to play up the octave. It just makes it harder and harder. It ups the ante, but it's very, very helpful. And um, I prepare almost everything down the octave and that you know leaves my face feeling fresh for my job and I did it in college and it's, it's always helped me a lot. Now. Another thing that can feel really good if your face is not feeling so great are just flexibility exercises. Any kind of noodly exercise will do. This is my favorite one. Of course, any, every teacher has one. smooth air column. That's really important for flexibility exercises. And um, we want to not be jumpy and noody with it. A lot of times if you seal in these good habits in little exercises, then you're more likely to keep them when you have, you know, long notes into fast notes and in pieces. So um, as in any 
basics exercise and any warm-up exercise, you want to make sure, be very conscious that you're actually having very good air and very good habits in these basics so that you can then transfer them. It's body memory and muscle memory that you're sealing in. So 45 minutes every morning or 20 minutes, you know, every morning of very good habits will get you a lot farther than the same amount of time uh, not thinking about the, the right habits and the right, the right production. So um, the last thing I'd like to recommend for a little bit of overuse is uh, there are noodles and snakes, I believe uh, also can be called spiders. They're a Caruso exercise. My teacher, Julie Landsman, has a, a videos on Caruso exercises. You can find them on her video series. But um, I like to also do them on the mouthpiece as a separate practice technique. So Eric's going to show us a little bit of a, a noodle or a snake on the mouthpiece. It's very good for, again, the smooth air, the efficiency of your face, not moving your face too much, letting your face really ride on the air, having the air be the propellant and the subdivision be the propulsion and the, the momentum behind everything that your face is asked to do when we play. So that is, a, I call it the snake. Um, and uh, so overall, my biggest suggestion for just healthy brass playing in general, but especially if you're having any facial concerns, is switch the emphasis. When we're worried about our face and our chops, we perpetuate any problem. It's paralysis by analysis. Basically, if you tell your brain, you know, to focus on one thing, it will do it, it will obey you. So we need to switch the emphasis. The bigger muscles will always be stronger and last longer than the smaller ones. So our belly, our torso, where the air comes from, the lungs, everything down there will be much more helpful to us than these small muscles up here. So I even tell my students to imagine that they have no head, they have no, no mouth, no chops, nothing. Only a torso that breathes in and out easily, relaxedly, silently. It's a good place to start. I spend entire rehearsals trying to re, you know, circle back to the breath and the air and the support and the production of, of this sound coming from air only. So now if you're having much more severe symptoms,